What's good Raider Nation? Today I want to talk to you guys about Tom Cable and just kind of discuss with you guys uh, how I feel about him. You know, I did make a video a couple of weeks ago about him. Uh, it got a lot of positive feedback from a lot of people. Now, of course, it's going to have its negative feedback as well. Uh, but I was just looking at some of these numbers uh, and I want to go over that with you guys. Uh, but before I get into that, I want to tell you guys that um, I created an Instagram account and I would appreciate it if you guys followed me. I'll put a link in the description below uh, to my Instagram. Uh, if you guys have Instagram, please follow me. I'll put up a lot of Raider content that's uh, quick and easy for me to upload. Uh, just things that I want to share with you guys. I do have a Twitter that I created uh, sometime last year. Uh, that's been that's been very very well. But I've also noticed a lot of people don't have Twitter. So uh, if you guys have Instagram, follow me on Instagram. If you guys have Twitter, follow me on Twitter. I'll put both links in the comment below. I'll pin it to the top. Um, but I want to talk about Tom Cable because I ran this uh, statistic um, of his. Um, for those of you guys that don't know, Cable became a, a NFL coach in 2006 and an offensive line coach in 2006 prior to that he was in college uh, you know he had he was a head coach he was a, a coordinator he had a lot of different positions uh, but once he got to the nfl he became a offensive line coach um and i'm gonna put this stat up for you guys uh, so you guys see it on the screen here um, essentially this is just his ranking uh, there's two rankings of course there's the run rank and there's the pass rank. now i thought about what the best method was to rank a the running game as well as the passing game now of course as far as passing game if you wanted to see who has the best passing team of course you look at like yards and touchdowns and interceptions but that's not really something an offensive line coach would be responsible for right uh, sacks is a better number to represent an offensive line coach uh, and then as far as in the run game uh, i thought about looking at total yards but i feel like that could easily be screwed uh, based on if one team ran the ball 500 times versus another team that ran the ball 350 times it doesn't really tell you who's the best running team um, of course that stat will also carry over right into rushing yards per game i thought yards per attempt ypa um made more sense right a team could run the ball 700 times a team could run the ball 300 times yards per average will um you know of course it'll it'll be consistent right uh, so the number of carries don't matter now um, just by looking at these numbers now again 2006 was his first year as a nfl offensive line coach um, one year with the falcons a couple years with the raiders a few of those seasons he was actually our head coach and then seahawks and then came back to the Raiders. Now, he gets a lot of crap that he's a bad offensive line coach as far as in, in the pass protection. A lot of people say his sack numbers uh, are, are pretty terrible, and they are. You can look at this list right here. I mean, he's been in the bottom 12 almost every single year. Besides 2012, every other year he was in the bottom 12, um, you know, to, which is 20th or 20th through 32. Um, which is pretty bad right and this is the total number of sacks so if a team gave up 70 sacks and that was the worst then that they would be ranked on here as 32 um, but that's not the whole story right uh, i mentioned this previously that uh, running is also a big part of offensive line coaching and honestly i think the running blocking scheme is more of an emphasis of, of if your coach is good or not, your offensive line coach. And the reason why is, as far as sacks given up, a lot of that is gonna be determined based on who the quarterback is. Uh, for example, in 2006, for that line of Falcons, the quarterback was Michael Vick. So when you look at Michael Vick, he's not a quarterback that's uh, you know a pocket passer, right? How many of those sacks, right, he was ranked 25th, how many of those sacks came because Michael Vick could not make the proper pass uh, quick enough, right? Um, and you, you take it a step further for the Raiders, right? He had Jamarcus Russell one year, uh, Dante Culpepper. I think he had Carson Palmer as well, maybe in one of those seasons. Um, you know, it, it's really interesting to just kind of think about the fact that sacks are not 100% on the offensive line coach. Now, of course, you know, you can take your pick here or there. Um, but he's he's always ranked really really bad 
And I feel like part of the reason why he's been ranked so poorly uh, as far as his offense line unit is the fact that look at his quarterbacks, right? Of course, he had the quarterbacks mentioned already. And then he had Russell Wilson, who even this past year was, I think, like the second most sacked quarterback. And that's without Tom Cable. In fact, from 2017, they actually got worse in sacks. So, again, I don't think that a offensive line coach really has a huge impact as far as um, being sacked or not. I think a lot of that is more on the offensive coordinator or the play calling and stuff like that and the quarterback, of course. But I do think as far as the running, uh, in the running game, I think that's 100% or very close to 100% on the offensive line uh, coach. Now, of course, the play calling, right, which is the offense coordinator head coach, will also have an impact on if a team's able to run the ball well or not. Uh, but Tom Cable, for the most part, has had a lot of success, um, you know, in the running game. I mean, he's been ranked in the top eight at least five times, right? in his 13 year career uh, you look at top top 15 or even top 20 I, I mean he's been in there almost every single year now it's interesting because he's he's notoriously known uh, for running his zone blocking scheme um but a lot of people don't like the zone blocking scheme now i personally love the zone blocking scheme uh, in fact I'll be creating a video for you guys on uh clutch yo family and, and in that video I'll primarily be talking about why he's no longer with the Raiders. Of course, he's one of the best linemen in the league, or one of the best guards at least, right? Uh, but one of his issues is, is he's not a good zone blocking uh, lineman. And I think a lot of that is, is because when he came into the league, he, he ran power, right? He was running that power scheme uh, where it's a quick decision, right? As far as in the power, there's not a lot of thinking uh, that you have to do. All you have to do is, if there's a guy uh, on your inside, right, if you're playing left guard, if there's a guy to your inside, you're going to block him. If there's a guy across from you and the run is to the left, you're going to hook him a certain way. If it's an in to your inside, you're going to hook him an a different way, right? Uh, the zone blocking is much different, right? The zone blocking is, is a lot of it is, is uh, double teaming. Um, you know, one lineman's going to help get around and the next lineman's going to slide up to the next level. Uh, so the zone blocking is much different. I like the zone blocking because I think uh, if you have smart offensive linemen, you get five smart guys. It could be any five. Uh, you'll have a good good line as long as they're smart uh, and they're able to you know at least uh, contain their blocks. Now uh, this video I've been creating since last week sometime. Um, those of you guys that follow me on Twitter or, or now my my new Instagram. Uh, you guys should have seen that I had my anniversary this this past week, my one year wedding anniversary. Uh, I haven't created videos for a couple of days. Uh, plus, I had a tragic incident happen as well, so uh, I really haven't been creating videos. I'll I'll be back into that. Uh, but that Clutch Assembly video, I started it last week on I think Thursday. Uh, I did it Thursday and Friday, and then I kind of put it aside up until last night. So I started working on it again last night. Um, I should have it for you guys tomorrow morning. So, um, uh, it, it, and it's an interesting video. You know, I really wanted to show you guys uh, some of the issues I saw with Clutch Hill Assembly um, and why, you know, if I had to predict today, um, I love Gabe Jackson. There's a chance he might be gone too. Maybe not this year, uh, but in the next year or so, I don't think we're going to re sign him. Uh, basically, because of the fact, if, if we're going to continue running zone blocking, that is. Now, I think we are right because uh, John Gruden loves loves his own blocking. So I don't think the Raiders are going to switch it up. So if I had to predict, I would think that Gabe Jackson is not going to be here either. Um, but we'll see. We'll find out. Right. Uh, which is also interesting because uh, Trent Brown, we, we picked him up. He's not a zone blocking guy. I mean, he's definitely a smart blocker. Uh, but I mean, he's big. So I don't know how the zone blocking is going to work with him. Now, of course, he'll be playing right tackle. Um, but it's going to be really interesting. You know, last year, the New England Patriots ran a power a lot of the time. Now, of course, the New England Patriots are the Patriots. So they, they do a lot of combination blocks. Um, they do zone as well. But primarily, they're, they're a power football team. Of course, with the Raiders picking up Trent Brown, I don't know. I, I don't see it right now. Maybe maybe he's a much better zone blocker than than. I know I do know that he's a smart player all right you need smart players to be good at running the zone I think the Raiders uh, did a good job with 
with trading away clutchy again that video I'll, I'll have for you guys um, hopefully tomorrow um, but I want to know what you guys think about Tom Cable let me know about those stats as well how important is the running game uh, compared to the past passing game and who gets to blame if, if you're giving up all these sacks should it really be the offensive line coach right I mean what if your quarterback's Russell Wilson who's notoriously always uh, in the bottom seven for sacks like could you really blame the offensive line coach um, I want to know what you guys think and then of course does uh, the offensive line coach get the credit uh, for a successful running team uh, let me know in the comments below again please subscribe to my Instagram channel I'd, I'd really appreciate it a lot of stuff that I'll be putting up there a lot of stats uh, a lot of things to do with the Raiders so uh, check that out follow me on Twitter I appreciate you guys watching please like share comment Subscribe if you guys are not subscribers. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time with the Game Film Breakdown.